Hello and welcome to another episode of This Week in the Tech News, where today I'm just going to kind of recap on some topics that I've spoken about before, and then there's a new vibe coming. Now the first story is going to be about well, graphics cards again. I know that I've been talking about graphics cards a lot lately, uh, but the thing is there's been a lot going on and it's very interesting. Uh, so I don't know if you've noticed, but if you go onto websites like Amazon or Newegg, you can start to notice that graphics cards are coming back in stock on websites like these. And they're also coming down in price a little bit, not massively, but you can actually notice them being, you know, you can find them for less than the cost of your firstborn child. The thing is though, it might be quite exciting that it seems as though all of these prices are coming down, but one thing that we have to remember is that cryptocurrency demand wasn't the only thing pushing up GPU prices. And we might not see the prices returning back to the point that they were before all of this. So yes, they're gonna come down, but they're not gonna come down to like $500 for a GTX 1080. And the reason for this isn't necessarily because of DRAM, because that's like the other reason people give for why graphics cards are supposedly being sold for so much, is because there just isn't any DRAM available to use for graphics cards, and then the graphics cards that are kind of made and sold are then immediately bought by cryptocurrency miners. But the thing is, I did a story a couple of months back on This Week in the Tech News, talking about how there's one company that supplies all of the silicon chips for like every single just PC manufacturer around basically. And this includes Apple and Samsung, anybody that uses silicon chips. And the issue is they've been really struggling to keep up demand because their factories are saturated and they don't have time to build another one and whatever. So basically it means that one of the most simple building blocks of in GPUs and pretty much all PC componentry is actually going up in price quite a lot. And they were saying something like a 25 to 30% increase in price for just silicon wafers, silicon chips over the next year or so. So we might see a big drop in GPU prices, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna go back to like the MSRP that we know and love of like $500 for a GTX 1080 and like $500 for, for a Vega 64 card? I don't, I, I honestly can't remember what the supposed MR, MSRP was of Vega because there was a huge controversy around it. Anyway, moving away from just kind of general graphics card news, ASRock is kind of trying to get in on that graphics card action. Now, I think this is because of the whole cryptocurrency thing, because I remember they brought out a motherboard that has like 18 PCI Express slots, so you can plug all the graphics cards in the world into it. And another thing that makes this move seem a bit cryptocurrency based is because the first graphics cards that they're going to bring in under the ASRock brand is AMD based, which is, yeah, it's interesting because it means, one, one good thing about that is it means that they haven't bought in to the evil GPP NVIDIA partner program. So yeah, that's, that's good for them. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be branded Phantom Graphics. And yeah, they might bring in video graphics cards later, but at this point, it seems as though they're gonna, they're gonna uh, focus their attention on AMD graphics cards. Now, coming back to a topic that again has been covered to death on This Week in the Tech News, but there have been even more Ryzen leaks. So these up and coming CPUs are driving the internet into a bit of a frenzy. And recently there have been some more solid benchmarks that have come out around the up and coming 2700X and 2600X. Now these benchmarks show that there's kind of a general improvement of about between 10 and 20% uh, depending on which workload, which is pretty good. Honestly, that's kind of better than I thought it was going to be. And one of the biggest improvements that these CPUs are going to have is when it comes down to latency. So that deals with like inter-core communication and things like that, which is awesome. So it looks as though these CPUs might be pretty great, to be honest. And it seems as though uh, EA didn't learn with the whole loot box fiasco around Battlefront 2, because with an up and coming update, they're actually gonna try and shoehorn the loot box back into the game. Um, so that's a little bit controversial. Back during my CES coverage, I spoke about the up and coming HTC Vive Pro, which on a side note, I'm still a little bit disappointed at the name, 
of the HTC Vive Pro, I think it's a lost opportunity. Just adding Pro to something that's better, I think, is really lazy. Uh, they could have called it the Majestic Uber Vive, or the Vive Platinum Triple Mega, or just something better than Pro. But anyways, the Vive Pro has gone up for pre-order, and it's going to cost you $800. Just personally, I think $800 is quite a lot to spend on something you're going to use once and then never use again, except for when the occasional friend comes over who's never seen one before. Um, but it's got a 70% increase in resolution over the normal Vive. It's also got a deluxe head strap, which is better, apparently. It's also got built-in, like, earphones, which are apparently of quite a high quality. And then it's also got, like, the faceplate of the Vive Pro is somehow more comfortable than the normal Vive. So it's not only a resolution increase. Uh, they've also said that they're going to be dropping the price of the normal HTC Vive down to $500. Now, the Vive Pro might be up for pre-order, but we have no idea when it's actually going to be released at this point. So if you're pre-ordering it, you're pretty much just like throwing money into a lake because you're not really sure when the big green monster is going to come out and hand you the thing that you're paying it for. Now before I end the video today, I just want to kind of extend an open invitation to people who watch my videos fairly regularly and comment and kind of interact with my content. I really do appreciate it a huge amount. Now lately I've been feeling like the actual name of my channel doesn't work very well. Yes, it's funny initially, or it was funny initially to me to have like a, a, a hardware name that also was a penis joke I thought was really funny. but. I think that for kind of further growth for my channel and kind of having it appeal to people that don't that, 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 that don't find inside penis jokes funny, which I think pretty much makes the majority of the human race, um, I need to actually change the name of my channel. Now, I've not been sure what to change it to, and I think if you have any suggestions for what you would think a good channel name would be, do let me know in the comments below, and let me know if you think it is a good idea for me to move away from the hard-on hardware name, because, you know, a double entendre like that's only going to be funny for so long. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, do like, and please comment and answer the questions in the video. That would be very helpful to me. Thank you very much. Much. And until the next video, bye-bye.